Thank you for uh, letting us be with you this afternoon. We're going to talk about a simulated hypothetical cyber event. We're going to backdrop it uh, with the help of a training organization. The state of California has an amazing training organization called CSTI. They're based in San uh, Luis Obispo, Cal Poly area. If you haven't taken a look at their catalog for emergency management and disaster training, they, they again have a solid portfolio of opportunities that government, both state, local, regional, county have access to, a very uh, cost effective training, and it will prepare you and your organization for managing a disaster. What you see on the screen there is a, uh, a snapshot of a, the fourth day of a four day training event where the participants in the class work through a simulated disaster at a city, a fictitious city, called Santa, Santa Luisa del Mar. It's a, it's a fictitious environment that lives in the Santa Luisa County. And you can see that there's several cities in Santa Luisa County. Santa Luisa del Mar is the largest city in this fictitious county with 105 popula 100,000, 105,000 population. And the entire four days of this training class essentially prepares you and your colleagues that attend with you on how to manage a disaster. And disasters can be anything from an overturned fuel truck on the major artery in the city, and it can go up to a 7.5, 8.0 earthquake, or in today's scenario we're gonna chat about is a cyber event. Just to give you a little sense, on Monday, the first day of the training class, they spend a half hour introducing you to Santa Luisa del Mar. So that's gonna be our backdrop. Here's what the city looks like. It's got a nice little bay. Uh, as, as, they, uh, as they share with you in the class, the, the mayor lives on that little uh, peninsula that juts out into the bay. It's a fun little uh, place to be. Full public safety operations. They have a water treatment plant. They've got a community college and a state college. So that's our backdrop today from the good folks at CSTI. And we want to thank Alex Cabasa, who's the superintendent of CSTI, for giving us today the uh, authorization to use this city as a backdrop for our, uh, our talk today. And of course, no good scenario wouldn't be uh, complete without the advisement that this is, uh, you know, this is a fictitious event. Uh, no, uh, no real people, no real uh, incidents are being referenced. Uh, we're going to tell you a, a scenario uh, based on facts from various many different things in the world, but today's event is just here at Santa Luisa del Mar Cyber Incident. So day one, Santa Luisa del Mar, everybody's at work, uh, folks are checking email at City Hall, and all of a sudden something like this pops up in their inboxes. And uh, it made it through spam filters, it made it through the various firewalls that are in place, and you can see it, it's kind of an interesting looking message. It's got a, a nice attachment if you're in the finance area or perhaps uh, somebody who deals with funds for the city, you could be potentially tempted to uh, open up this thing because it might be part of your business. And it, it landed in several different places in Santa Luisa del Mar. So what happens? We open it up and guess what? There's a little payload that starts affecting city systems. And before you know it, Day two and day three, we're starting to hear from some of our neighboring cities that uh, you're sending us email. Uh, Okta, Okta was with us a little earlier today, did a nice presentation. Sammy shared with us that one of the major things that folks are after in the cyber hacking world is your email system because now they have a trusted platform to share their uh, malware with, with other agencies that your environment is potentially connected to. And so that's what's happening here in our scenario, day two and day three. Uh, Santa Luisa del Mar is starting to hear back from neighboring cities that says, hey, we're getting these strange email from you. Uh, we're, we're, we're quarantining them. What's going on? And ultimately, it requires the city to shut off their email system because 
something's happening. It's a little bit out of our wheelhouse. We've never seen anything like this before. Usually the spam filters catch all that bad stuff, and now we need to manage it. So once we're offline, obviously email isn't happening anymore. And so how do we communicate with employees? How do we tell folks what's happening in our environment? Because usually we send an email out from whoever, whoever the authority is, and, and now that's not with us today. So we've got to manage getting a hold of our folks and telling them what's going on. Ultimately, we find out that we're chasing an Artemis infection. That's what's been sent to us. We've got uh, a, a malware came in via email. Somebody activated that malware within our environment. Artemis is what we're chasing. And then, of course, we're working through this scenario to clean out our email system because we've got to get back online, right? We've got to get our systems back up and running. So the IT teams are scrubbing our environment to try to get these, these attachments out of our email to make sure that we're clean and we can turn email back on. And then, of course, our neighboring agencies are saying, well, Santa Luisa Del Mar must be having a bad day. We're not going to really trust anything that's coming out of them right now. So, they're starting to take actions on their own. Even when you get back up and running, you might not be able to talk to the folks that are your neighboring agencies because they've already said, eh, we can't trust that right now. So that's taking place behind the scenes outside of your world. And then, of course, let's use the voicemail system, right? Everybody's got a phone on their desk. We'll create a voicemail. We'll push it out to everybody. And that's how we'll notify them about what we're doing, what steps we're taking, what problems we're having in IT. We'll use the voicemail system for that. So fortunately, we get things cleaned up. We're in day four, post-email event, right? This thing that came in and kind of cost us a little bit of grief, but I think we've got it under control. We've cleaned out the email environment. We've communicated with the employees that they can turn their machines back on. So email's back up and running. We're back up and happening. But behind the scenes, we're still seeing some viruses move around. And, and although Artemis is what we thought we were chasing, uh, it turns out that uh, the virus provider that we use uh, at Santa Luisa Del Mar is, you know, that's kind of what they classify viruses that they might not know too much about. So it's, it's called Artemis. And so good IT folks do some research and they find out that, uh, hey, maybe if we change our virus uh, software, we might learn something new. And, and all of a sudden, we see that we've got a trick bot virus moving around the organization. So Santa Luisa Del Mar is... Uh, you know, public safety provider, full-featured full city organization. Fortunately, some of the systems that they have in place have protected some of the sub-networks that are part of their full organization. So the good news is that the public safety environment hasn't seen any of this trick bot. Everything's clean over there. And the servers don't seem to be uh, uh, affected by this software that's made its way, this malware that's made its way in. So that's kind of the environment we're in. We've identified the the virus that's causing us grief, it's TrickBot. We think this new antivirus software is going to help us mitigate that. And, and for the most part, we're seeing that happen. We're starting to see things come back up and look good. So we step away from the scenario right now and just share a little bit about what is TrickBot. If you, if you Google TrickBot, Malwarebytes Labs, kind of their environment where they share some of their work and their, their findings. Uh, Wendy has a nice article from November of 2018 that, that, that does a great deep dive in what TrickBot is from kind of an executive level point of view. And one of the elements that uh, she shares is if you want to help prevent TrickBot from becoming a problem in your organization, you want to train your employees on identifying what malware looks like or what email looks like that might have malware attached to it. And so running uh, various phishing campaigns or malware campaigns, education processes, one of the best ways to prevent this from happening. And then if you want to remediate it, if you want to get rid of it or prevent yourself from having some challenges with TrickBot, there's a patch specific from Microsoft 17.010 that will help prepare your endware systems from not being vulnerable to TrickBot. And then, of course, the final thing is, if TrickBot is running around in your organization, change account credentials, update passwords. TrickBot is very notorious for being able to either gather passwords, collect passwords, and then move laterally through your organization. And so changing passwords during a TrickBot 
outbreak is one of the major, one of the main things that they recommend for helping survive and get out of it. Anything else, Mark, you've seen from the TrickBot environments uh, out there? Uh, not so much, Greg. Uh, I would like to ask a question, though, uh, if I could. So yes. the, the staff that you had, were they, did they have a very advanced, uh, any type of training, anything of that nature, to be able to detect these types of, uh, prior to this infestation? Or? So uh, Santa Luisa del Mar, again, a population of 105,000 employees uh, has an IT, you can imagine, of probably about eight to 10 people. Um, some of them have been to cybersecurity awareness training, maybe a, a two or three day event. Um, we're gonna talk about some training opportunities that CSTI uh, partners with to, to provide additional training to your staff. But for the most part, there is not, uh, when you look through, and, and actually I brought it up, here, here are the CSTI documents on Santa Luisa del Mar. It's a full-fledged background environment of the organization that we're working with today. Um, no mention of the cyber training that they've had. Awesome. But, so so we are working with, with good, hardworking IT folks, uh, but maybe no specialists at this point. Thank you. Come back next year and we'll see how Santa Luisa Del Mar does on their cyber uh, posture. So we've re we're working on remediating. Another excellent uh, article that you might want to Google, a bleeping computer just as of November of this year, November 11th, 2019. Uh, Sergia tells us that TrickBot continues to be uh, wreaking havoc, not only on government, but local uh, 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 business entities, private industry, uh, masquerading as a sexual harassment complaint. So imagine one of your employees getting an email out of the blue, potentially from a trusted neighboring environment or, or some other source. Uh, the U.S. Equal Employment Opportunity Commission sends this email out to one of your employees with an attachment. Here are the details of the complaint that's been filed against you. This is actively taking place now. So that's what we're up against. That's, that's what we're fighting. So obviously being aware of the malware that you're working with, right? What are the, some of the elements of that? How can we prevent it? How do we take care of it and clean it? Uh, but how would we even know? Uh, Mark, you asked an excellent question. Do the employees of Santa Luisa Del Mar uh, understand how severe, how serious this can be? And where are they plugging in? Uh, you can see that the FBI in 2018 produced a document specifically saying TrickBot is causing havoc related to ransomware. And another organization, Mark Yours, also puts out bulletins. What can you share about what the state has available to local, county, regional government? Sure, so when those come in and we have the uh, ransomware uh, either attacks or, or virtually anything where uh, an entity feels that they're having a challenge, they can reach out and call the Cybersecurity Integration Center uh, at any time. We have a 1-800 number uh, that we have technicians on standby that can assist with uh, anything from questions to full-blown incident response. So I'd like to caveat that. Uh, we do provide incident response to the state of California in general. Uh, we'll provide a team uh, for up to 72 hours, an initial triage um, that can come out to your organizations or to the state entity um, and basically do an eval and triage and try and help that city or county get to a better place. So we do have some resources uh, that, are, that are put in place through Cal OES uh, that we can help. So. And, and does something from your organization come out daily or? Uh, sure, we what, also and have. What, a, what's the content of that typically? Right, so we have reports that we, uh, that we actually produce daily uh, and these, uh, what we have is a team of technicians that go out and pretty much screen scrape the web and they, they try and find everything that's related to cybersecurity events that might have happened over the course of the evening. And then they put that all together into a nice little report. Uh, and then email that out. We try and get that out about 8 o'clock in the morning so that way when you're coming into work and you have your coffee, you know, you can kind of sit there and go over that report and save, save the security professionals some time uh, on that. We also do advisories and we have bulletins and such uh, that we put out um, when, we're, when we're tackling new challenges, I'll say. It, it, Whenever we hear something that, you know. How much is that is subscription? How much do we have to pay, uh, pay you to get oh, that? It's uh, quite expensive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's zero. There we dollars. go. Yeah, Amazing. It's, it's way up there. So uh, prior to this TrickBot outbreak in Santa Luisa del Mar, uh, the IT folks weren't necessarily familiar with this state organization and the information that they share. So industry awareness is something that uh, free, no cost, your environment can plug into. 
and begin to get a little bit of situational understanding of what's happening in the IT arena. And that way, if perhaps they've seen a bulletin that comes out of Mark's organization that's got a little header like the FBI flash here that says TrickBot is uh, somehow associated to ransomware, maybe they can get ahead of what's happening here uh, by saying, hey, that doesn't sound good. We've got it running around in our organization. Maybe we need to pay attention to this, right? Sure. It's not just our regular everyday, oops, I got, I think something happened on my machine. Uh, another organization that's been mentioned here already, uh, I think Charlie uh, this morning from Sacramento uh, shared MSISAC, uh, another free uh, service, another free um, org uh, subscription, uh, a membership that you can sign up for, and they produce a number of informational documents. Again, uh, this one talking about TrickBot and uh, some of the challenges that it could bring to your organization. And then other resources that you want to be aware of and reach out to are the regional fusion centers uh, established through the Department of Homeland Security and now also running through the state of California stack. Uh, these fusion centers work within a regional fashion uh, identify yours. If you don't know that phone number already, I encourage you to jot down the information shared for your region. Uh, these have some uh, amazing, talented people, cyber analysts, uh, who you want to become friends with. Make sure that uh, they're familiar with who you are or who your IT security folks are. In the event that you had something like Santa Luisa Del Mar and TrickBot uh, outbreak, and you, uh, through your industry awareness bulletins, realize, hey, we've got something here that could become very serious, reach out to your fusion centers, and they can point you in the right direction. If they don't have the resources themselves, they'll connect you in the MSI SAC, they'll connect you up here to the state, and they'll help you start to untangle some of the challenges that you might be working on within your IT arena. Sure, and if I could, I'd like to add to that the fusion centers. Uh, are you guys familiar with the fusion center concept? I mean, everybody understands what that looks like, right? So the fusion centers, uh, for, for our perspective, is really that first line of defense uh, that we have for, uh, or intake, I'll say, triage intake, uh, that we have for the state, right? So the concept would work where if you have a cyber incident that is occurring in your location, your agency, or even at your house, uh, in many cases, depending on you know, what you got going on, um, you could pick up the phone and call these, and this is, uh, in a sense, almost like dialing, you know, Cyber 911, uh, which we do have a solution for, uh, which we're going to take a look at using 211. Uh, it's another briefing. However, if you go through the uh, through the Fusion Center concept, that's the initial intake. Uh, they'll provide uh, basic triage services for you, uh, do an analysis of the situation, uh, and then make a determination real quick on, on what the proper resources are to get to you. So the, the Fusion Center concept is really working in the state of California. Uh, and we are also co-located with the stack uh, in Sacramento. So uh, when the SARS come in, we have direct access to those. So. And again, how much do those Fusion Centers cost? Oh, yeah, it's zero. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Beautiful. You're going to see a theme. It's all free. <laughs> all right. So we're at Santa Luisa Del Mar. The IT folks have been working now for uh, a number of days. Uh, day nine of this uh, trick bot outbreak. And what are the action items? What is something that you can take back to your organization uh, based on what we've learned through this, this hypothetical event? Uh, patch your systems. Patch, patch, patch. Many of the viruses, many of the attacks that are in play today do have remediation elements through your operating systems that would prevent them from grabbing hold. And we saw that in the, uh, the Malware Byte Labs uh, documentation. The TrickBot with the appropriate patch isn't going to be effective. So patch your environments. And then the cyber folks always say, hey, you know, although the operating systems say, hey, you can patch and then keep going, uh, it's highly recommended you reboot the environment check for potential additional patches that might need to be applied to your machine. So uh, zero cost opportunity, patch your systems, reboot them, patch them again. Of course, educating employees, right? That's easier said than done, but it, it can be potentially a lunch and learn. It, it could be something that your, your senior executive says, hey, we need to make a little investment on some sort of training opportunity for our employees. So that's something that's either low cost or no cost to help prevent you know, the folks who are going to end up kind of introducing this to you potentially. Admin password resets, obviously a whole nother conversation. We're not going to do a deep dive in, but if something is happening within your organization that looks a, a little uh, scary, 
you know, let's get to those passwords, let's reset them, let's reset them often. Let's make sure we're not uh, using passwords among us, we're not sharing passwords among the IT folks, right? It's common to have a service account that somebody would kind of jump into the service account and do, do some activity. Let's try to break that out, right? So each individual IT person has their own set of passwords. We can force some password resets in that environment. Of course, let's get a hold of people who know what's happening around us, right? MSISAC, the CalCSIC, uh, fusion centers, right? Let's build some relationships with those organizations today. Zero cost, a little bit of time, right? Just like this event today where we're here, we're out of the office, we're investing some time, but we're networking and we're learning some new resources and we might get some daily briefings uh, sent to us that might give us a heads up on what's happening in the industry, how to prepare ourselves. For the tech folks, uh, if you've never heard of Microsoft Laps, uh, that's a free technology for Microsoft that will help your organization make sure that the passwords on the PCs sitting on each desk, uh, all, as you can imagine, all of them have an admin account that your folks jump into and, and do work with, all of those passwords can be set differently through this tool, Microsoft Laps. Take a quick Google on that one, and uh, it's, uh, again, free of charge and very effective in helping slow down virus movement laterally from PC to PC if all of those admin accounts have different passwords. And then, of course, another potential big investment would be uh, an endpoint detection and response software, EDR. A number of vendors here can tell you about that, but it's kind of that next level above and beyond what virus software is. Uh, it's something outside of your firewall. It makes sure that each machine is kind of telling a host uh, what's happening on that specific machine so you can better detect where viruses have landed and where machines are being corrupted and uh, managed. It, it is a bit of an investment, but a very significant and worthwhile investment uh, as you're moving down this path of making your organization uh, much more challenging to, uh, to infect and, and, and break into. So those are lessons learned from our cyber uh, oops. Uh, there was an email with an attachment. Uh, we have now made it to day 13, right? So those email came in on day one. We're now on day 13. And interestingly enough, at 10.46 p.m., right? And nobody's really in the office. Um, we have a, a, a sad, scary uh, thing take place that um, if you haven't seen one of these before, uh, this kind of says, hi, we're here and uh, we'd like to talk. Uh, this version that we see here on our day 13 at Santa Luisa del Mar uh, has a couple of email up in the upper left corner. Uh, they've been modified for today's presentation because they're unique, uh, but that's essentially the mechanism that uh, some folks are saying, hi, reach out to us, we'd like to talk. And if you take a deep dive into some of the directories, uh, you'll notice that a number of files have a uh, have a, a new new extension on them, RYK, and those files have been encrypted. So now you're starting to think, uh-oh, we've got something going on here. We were chasing a virus, we thought we were doing okay, uh, but now uh, a number of our systems are um, infected. So a uh, nice thing for Santa Luisa Del Mar is that uh, they had an IT uh, system admin working late and uh, noticed that some things were happening weird with the system. Uh, the CIO is actually traveling today at, uh, at Santa Luisa del Mar. Uh, they're, they're out of state uh, on vacation, and so the, the system admin who's kind of in charge says, we, we gotta stop this thing from moving, right? So they run down to, uh, run down to City Hall, they jump into the uh, IT environment, and uh, they start disconnecting systems, right? Because we're on the internet, we figure the internet's probably involved here. Uh, we've got the police department, we wanna make sure it doesn't affect them. We've got fire department and library, so we go into the network room and we start disconnecting cables and, and working to stop whatever this Ryuk thing might be that's in front of us. So, where are we in the scenario? We are day 14, we are ransomware day one, and our internet is connected, our campuses are disconnected. Uh, we uh, at uh, Santa Luisa Del Mar have you know, potentially over 140 servers that now need to be checked to see, hey, did this, this malware make its way to them? The Active Directory is not working. The uh, virtual environment, right, if you're, if, uh, you know, most of you are familiar with uh, virtual servers these days, right? We don't necessarily have stacks of hardware that are, you know, uh, 12 and 13 physical servers. We may have four or five physical servers with a bunch of virtual environment. That's been affected. The backup system itself has been affected. 
the email server, it's back offline again. And uh, interestingly enough, the, the voicemail server, which we had been communicating with employees on uh, earlier, uh, is now also offline. So where's the good news in this? Well, the nice thing for Santa Luisa Del Mar is that 911 is still working, right? And uh, the reason that is happening is because it's air-gapped, right? 911 doesn't typically touch uh, local environments. It's, it's operated by the state uh, and, and their partners, their industry partners. And so 911 usually doesn't seem to get touched in events like this. Uh, the voice over IP, the phone system, is still online. So we can make calls uh, throughout the buildings and, and across the organization, but some of our campuses were disconnected, right? Our, our sysadmin said, hey, we need to protect the kingdom and, and make sure that other folks aren't going to be affected by this. So VoIP connections at off-site locations might not be working. Another piece of good news, though, is that our cloud services are up and running. Our website is in the cloud. So the website's still there. We're still operating. We look like we're on the map. That's a very good thing. Uh, you know, maybe the library system is in the cloud, so perhaps the library is going to be fine during this process, provided we can get their workstations reconnected to the Internet. And then uh, your SQL servers, where a lot of your data lives, doesn't appear to be a problem with Ryu. The server's got some issues, right? We've got all of these RYK file exchanges on the server, but if you can dig into the SQL database itself, we're actually doing pretty good. And then your public safety radio system, again, similar to 911, they kind of live in their own world. Uh, you know, again, Charlie this morning talked a little bit about analog. A lot of radio systems are kind of still in that analog world. Uh, so we're good. Those are, those are wonderful things that are happening in the middle of this interesting event. So what do we do, right? What does Santa Luisa Del Mar start to do? Of course, you need to make notifications. We had an excellent presentation by Carlos uh, Carrillo from IBM this morning on your incident response plan and what some of the elements of the incident response plan are. Of course, notifying your senior executives, your attorneys, uh, reporting to law enforcement. You, you might have noticed I'm with the Livermore Police Department. Why, why am I having uh, this conversation with you on cyber events? Well, law enforcement is you know, pretty critical in some of these things because what we've just seen at Santa Luisa Del Mar is a crime. It's a state crime, it's a federal crime, and law enforcement is just starting to understand that there's a role for them in this type of event, and so we wanna make sure that the law enforcement folks are aware. Do you have an incident response discovery plan? What, uh, what Carlos told us today, uh, shared with us, is a playbook, right? Is there some sort of playbook that's out there available for you to start responding to the event? And then, how do we get some assistance? <laughs> Who's out there to help us make this a little bit of a better day? And in this instance, they reach out to the Fusion Center and they say, uh, we've got something happening, and uh, is there anybody out there that can help us, please? And then, of course, contact your cyber insurance provider. How do you message employees on what's happening? And then, at some point, you're going to probably have to do some messaging to the public. The nice thing is your website's still up and running, so you do have a platform there. You probably have social media accounts, and those are still operational. Um, the one interesting thing is, you know, in Santa Luisa County, uh, we have a number of neighboring cities who a few days earlier, right, were getting some odd email from us, and it's like, oh, there's something rattling over there at Santa Luisa Del Mar. Um, the message I would share to those neighboring cities is Santa Luisa Del Mar is having a bad day, and don't make it worse by kind of telling their story, right? This is Santa Luisa Del Mar's incident. You're a neighbor. How can you help? Don't... Don't tell their story for them. Let Santa Luisa Del Mar do the messaging and do the communication as they roll this event out. And be there to assist. Uh, if you receive media requests about what's going on over there, you know, point them back, right? Let Santa Luisa Del Mar tell their own story. And then of course, as you reach out to your cyber insurance folks, you're gonna get a claim created and the cyber insurance folks are gonna set up some teams for you, legal representation, an incident response firm, and a cyber negotiator. And you go, cyber negotiator, what's that? Well, Forbes, I think it's up there, right? Forbes has a, quite an interesting little article. If you wanna Google it, 
uh, meet the firm that pays Bitcoin ransom on behalf of its customers. And uh, Kate uh, O'Flattery uh, from Forbes has a nice little article about um, if this happens to an organization, and of course the bad actors are looking for Bitcoin, uh, you might not have to go figure out how to manage Bitcoin. Uh, or there are industry partners out there that can help you navigate that. And then, of course, the Regional Fusion Center is going to assist you in connecting with resources, both at the state level. They're going to help you connect up with an FBI special agent that would be assigned to this event. And then they're also going to assist with reaching out to local IT staffs within your organization. Those other cities in Santa Luisa County might have some IT staff that can assist you. They're going to go check and see uh, what they might be able to do. Now, in our instance here, the state incident response team, uh, folks that Mark works with on a daily basis, are available and able to respond to us in 36 hours. So that's good news for Santa Luisa Del Mar. And so this second phase of our scenario essentially has taken us through an infection, and now we've landed with uh, ransomware on site. What are some of the things that are going to be necessary for us to be successful in getting ourselves out of this? And so, uh, Mark, some of these things that you see on the screen are preparation documents that you would hope to have available to you when, when you get on site. Share with us some of the importance of why these need to be, uh, I say paper, I say a cyber incident plan in paper. Uh, again, I'll go back to Charlie Sacramento this morning. I like his word analog. I think if I do this presentation somewhere else, I'm gonna change that out to analog because sure. all of these things typically live in a uh, server somewhere, right? And so sure. we just go print them out if we need them. What are the importance of these things? Well, Greg, I think you, I think you kind of alluded to it. I mean, that's really great, but that's assuming you can access your server, right? Or be able to access your email. Uh, in the case of Santa Luisa del Mar, um, this proved to be a challenge, I believe, uh, from the from the onset, right? So we come in and uh, things that you wouldn't even think of, uh, like uh, memorandums of understanding, uh, things that you should have tried to have in place prior to the actual incident, uh, now become a challenge because if my normal process is to send an email with an MOU to the affected individual and then they get it, download it, goes through legal, uh, and then they sign it and send it back, well, that's great, but this is, you know, now you have no email, uh, if you think about it from that perspective. So you can't even get the MOU back. Uh, so the secondary email accounts uh, are critical uh, when you think about this faction. Um, also, you know, what kind of gets thrown out the window uh, at that point is the whole, well, I shouldn't be using Gmail or I shouldn't be using Yahoo, uh, things of this nature. I agree. I, I don't believe that we should be using, uh, unless it's a business portion of that uh, account. However, if you have no secondary email uh, or service to fall back on uh, at that point, then yes, you ha you're going to have to do something to try and get your, your uh, Santa Luisa Del Mar back uh, to, to an operational state at that point. Um, the fusion centers themselves, uh, these are relationships that, that are critical to have set up prior to going in. I, I, if you think about uh, when a cyber incident actually happens, and in this case uh, with Santa Luisa Del Mar, uh, the very first step should be to pick up the phone and, and call you know, a fusion center. Um, this is largely due to the 911 services are just not prepared at this point to, to handle that, that volume, but, but through Cal OES we do have a solution for that. Uh, what we're looking to do uh, is we're going to take the 211, which is now normally information, and we're going to try and uh, utilize that uh, as an as a intake uh, for certain things, right? So the idea would be that you'd pick up the 211 and you'll get the same types of resources, uh, response uh, capabilities. You can, you know, advice on what to do. Uh, should I unplug the server? Should I not unplug the server? So, uh, so we're working with the state right now to try and, try and get that uh, put up as well, so I think it's going to be a good thing. Cyber insurance speaks for itself. Uh, I think you uh, you have to have some type of insurance or some kind of fallback plan, but go into it with eyes wide open as well. Uh, I think with uh, one of the challenges that we had with San Luisa del Mar was that uh, we needed to make sure we understood what our coverages actually were up front coming in. And we didn't want to step on toes uh, to have a first responder show up and then negate that uh, cyber insurance policy. So just make sure that you understand what's in your policy and also the deductible uh, as well. Make sure you understand upfront what your deductibles are for the policy. So all of all of the, the 
um, things that you have up on the screen, 100% critical. So again, uh, Mark, thank you. The secondary email, um, something that you really want to encourage your folks not to do is use personal email, right? Uh, we heard from uh, James Waterman this morning that our, our smart devices are very uh, high processor power. They're connected to the internet, right? There's a tons of things going on. So as soon as uh, this type of event takes place, folks are going to think, well, you know, just send it to me at my email address, right? Uh, prepare, uh, work with your folks, come up with some sort of schema that would allow you to build some of those secondary email accounts that likely would survive an incident, right? Provided I get to the internet, I can probably get into my Gmail account. Uh, so come up with some sort of, uh, you know, schema, some sort of, hey, let's have the IT folks, let's have some of our security folks and maybe even the risk management folks have some sort of Gmail backup accounts and let's test them every six months. Let's make sure we remember the password. Let's, you know, uh, you know if we do multi-factor authentication on those secondary email accounts, you know, I changed my phone, I bought a new one, that little application I used from Google for that number the pop up's not there anymore. Right now, what do I do? Um, those are some things that you can do today. Again, low cost, no cost, your cyber incident plan, print it out, analog, uh, your inventory of servers, print it out, uh, your, your contracts, as Mark's mentioned, who are those contacts? What are the contract numbers? If I need to get Microsoft on the phone, uh, what's that number available to me? Password recovery and, and multi-factor, right? Many of us do password recoveries through our, our organization's email address, right? If that's not available to you, how do we work around that? Some things that you can plan for now. Uh, we talked about the fusion centers. Mark mentioned the fusion centers. Reach out to them, say hi, exchange uh, contact information, make sure you know who they are and, and what their availability is and what services they can provide you uh, as they reach out to the state. And of course, cyber insurance is, is a major component. What does that provide you? What are some of the limitations? Uh, understand that. Uh, software, your backup software, your backup server might be affected by an event like this. How do we rebuild the backup server if there's no internet? Do I have software on a USB that I can put back into the environment? Where is that software inventory? And is it available to us offline and in an on-the-shelf factor? And then, of course, secondary internet, right? Some sort of means, you know, uh, your phone will get you a certain uh, pathway through this, this recovery process, but some sort of secondary uh, internet is going to be very helpful uh, to your IT folks and the other teams that are assisting them. So we've made it through our initial virus. Oops, it got us. Uh, we sadly have a ransomware event happening in Santa Luisa del Mar. Uh, but the good news is that the recovery support team is available. They're on their way, and they're going to help us. Uh, Mark, what are some of those uh, icons we see on the screen, and, and how tightly uh, knit are they working together? We've got Cal OES, okay. the state of, here, I'll, I'll put it right there oh, in front of you, sorry. I couldn't see that last <laughs> The CHP, CalGuard, OES, and the uh, State uh, Department of IT. What, what are these folks working on uh, to help prepare and, and recover uh, Santa Luisa Del Mar? Right, so when, when we got the call uh, from Santa Luisa Del Mar, well, actually, let me back up for a second. So the way that this all kind of occurred in San Luisa del Mar was the system worked. Uh, it worked exactly like it was supposed to work. So we had a, a complaint coming from uh, San Luisa del Mar, came into the fusion center. In this case, it was the Northern uh, California uh, Fusion Center or the NICRIC. Uh, we received the uh, heads up from the NICRIC that there was a challenge that was happening in San Luisa del Mar. Uh, and what that, uh, what that did was it, it put a whole chain of events into motion. Uh, what you're looking at on the screen is something that uh, what I like to call the principal partners that we have uh, that make up the CalSIC. Uh, so you have to understand first what the Cybersecurity Integration Center is truly about. It's a collaborative environment that is made up of, of virtually everyone in the state. We do have partners that, uh, that provide a lot more resources than others. Uh, but for all intents and purposes, we are the Highway Patrol. We are OES, we are the military department. Yes, it's all of us, uh, and including many state agencies. Uh, so when this, when this chain uh, was kicked in and we, and we started working this, um, then, then uh, the folks at Cal OES 
got on a conference call with these four partners that you see here and, and the heads of these agencies, or at least from this perspective of the cyber world, uh, got together at a table and, uh, and made some phone calls out to uh, San Luis Del Mar uh, administrators, uh, got in touch with some folks and, and tried to put a game plan together of uh, what would be the best way to assist them. Uh, at that time, each one of these uh, agencies that you see on your screen, they do have uh, specialty areas that they are, are, are really good at, but any one of those agencies can, can do a full-blown incident at any given time uh, in light of each other, right? Um, so, so when the phone call came in, uh, the table was convened, uh, and at that point they determined that it was a large incident uh, and that they would have to launch. Uh, and by launch, what I mean is that uh, they basically made the determination at that point to send a team of incident responders uh, down to Santa Luisa Del Mar uh, to assist them, or at least do an evaluation. And what this looked like was a team of uh, uh, the CalSIC individuals with the military department uh, as well. Um, we launched for up to 72 hours for an initial triage, or, or I'm sorry, an initial triage. Uh, to get in and, and find out what's going on. We can stay uh, up to a full week on occasion uh, at that point. In this case, uh, in San Luis Del Mar, it did turn into a longer event than 72 hours. Uh, so we actually had to do kind of a battle handoff in the middle uh, there where, where um, you know, Cal OES staff members had to be replaced uh, and then they picked up and carried on uh, while the rest of the triage was going on. So, um, so this, what you're looking at, the principal uh, four partners that we have um, are who gets activated, uh, but I, that's not to say that from an incident response perspective uh, it, that it couldn't be somebody from another state agency. So what we're, are, we're striving to do is uh, some resource typing where we can get uh, a very good accurate depiction of who are our incident responders out in the field. And we're looking at state agencies, we're looking at local, you know, even the federal partners, uh, because these are resources that we can call upon, uh, just like the, the principal partners that you see in front of you here, those are resources that the CalSIC uh, and the state of California can draw upon as well. Uh, and, and many of those resources are free uh, as well. So we're, we're all about saving money as well too, right? We're trying to do that. And, and the benefit of these organizations getting involved in the, an event is that they can also reach out to the FBI and kind of interface and help do some of that forensic lift that some of the talented staff might not have had much experience with. So once these experts are on site, uh, one of their main uh, goals and objectives, get enough evidence that we can mount a prosecution through the, the law enforcement and FBI partners, uh, and then start working on recovery and, and rebuilding and getting systems back up into place. Sure. Now, when your team shows up at Santa Luisa Del Mar, uh, what are some of the things that uh, your, your host now needs to be thinking about in order to make sure your teams are successful while you're working on this event? Sure. Um, yeah, so when, when we show up, uh, you know, especially if we have a team, it depends on how many team members we have, uh, we try and take care of the logistics uh, as far as like hotel, car, things of that nature prior to going to the incident. So we have those set up at OES. Um, but really what we look for is space, right? So we like to get in there. Uh, we like to set up a command center first thing. Uh, we have a lot of checklists that we're going to ask and things of this nature. So in the case of San Luis Del Mar, we did set up a command uh, post. Uh, one of the first things we also like to do is set up some conference calls. Uh, normally we have three of those uh, per day, one at 0800, one at 1200 hours, uh, and then another closeout at 15 or 1800 hours, and that's usually for um, the closeout of the day, so the executive brief uh, would happen. And then we also have one technical, uh, just pure blown technical discussion uh, as well, and then we have the opening one in the morning. Uh, that conference line normally stays up, and in this case did stay up 24-7, uh, so we can use that as a collaborative environment. Um, we then uh, had questionnaires that uh, various staff members uh, answered for us, which uh, you know gave us a, a lot more insight as to what the, the true problem is. Some of the things we look at uh, or we would request would be topology diagrams, data flow diagrams, business uh, impacts uh, statements, any type of uh, SSPs that you would have or system security plans. Uh, and uh, things of this nature, right? So we, we're gonna come in and we're gonna pretty much ask you for your topology documents or any network related uh, documents that you may have. Uh, and then we're gonna sit down and we're gonna start analyzing. Uh, and in this case, we did that for, uh, for 
about probably I'd say a good two hours. We sat down and took a look until we understood truly what we got. Then we had a, a meeting um, with uh, a lot of the Santa Luisa Del Mar executive uh, staff as well to determine next steps forward. From a, from a perspective, uh, at that point, I believe we did determine that it was a full-blown crime that we were looking at. Um, and so at that point, the FBI was fully engaged uh, along with the California Highway Patrol. Uh, whenever we notice that there is a criminal activity and it can be validated 100%, we always call the uh, FBI and the uh, Highway Patrol. Um, reverse that, Highway Patrol first, then the FBI, sorry. Uh, so we always try and, try and do that. Uh, because the folks that we have currently at the CalSIC are not sworn officers. Uh, we don't go kicking in doors. We usually let the other guys do that and then we'll take the system after, right? So that's kind of how we, we look at that. And so when the team arrives, uh, priority number one, forensic evidence collection, let's make sure public safety systems are in the forefront, and then let's build the rebuild, the technology environments, your virtual environment, your active directory, uh, the goal is to get internet back up and running, and of course, uh, email online. If, if, if you're up, if your organization, if Santa Luisa del Mar is uh, got email flowing and the internet's back up and running, uh, at least they're on the map and, and they're accessible to their partners in government and, and their, uh, their citizenry as well. So that's what the focus is. Uh, the benefit of the, uh, the CalSeq responding and the, the state partners that come along is they have cyber experts with them. Uh, they have direct access into Microsoft resources and virtual resources, your VMware, your Hyper-V uh, resources. They have networking equipment that they bring with them, some uh, forensic equipment that they can help try to tease out what's happening in the network. They have software that's available to you for forensic evaluation of what's happening on the endpoints. And as Mark mentioned, they, they set up a nice cadence of daily meetings and check-ins so that when we uh, set a mission at Santa Luisa del Mar, this is what we're going to accomplish in the next eight hours. Uh, that happens. We get feedback from the folks that are working on it, and then we can give the senior executive leadership an update on what progress is, is coming along. And so you continue to work towards recovery and support, uh, collecting the forensic evidence, which has happened here at Santa Luisa del Mar. FBI got their package. Uh, the firewall logs uh, start to be uh, analyzed and we find out where the bad actors are talking and we block off that opportunity for any residual malware to talk to the command and control. So get firewalls back up and running. The virtual infrastructure at Santa Luisa del Mar was uh, kind of brought back up at day 18. We're, uh, we're R5, uh, which is good, good progress. Uh, documentation is, uh, you know, now uh, we may be able to get into a file system where that network diagram lived. Now we can get it, we can print it out. And then recovery and support, uh, continuing to identify infected workstations. Uh, we're starting to connect the campus back up. But the interesting thing is, right, so you might reach out to the Fusion Center, hi, we're, we're day six into this and we're ready to start focusing on our workstations, right? We've been uh, heavily uh, working on the Active Directory, trying to get the internet back up, and now we need to work on workstations and we need 20 people because we've got, you know, probably a good 500 uh, plus uh, workstations. We need some help. Uh, fusion centers are uh, able to kind of reach out to your local IT teams, say, hey, can you spare uh, five or six people on a Thursday because uh, Santa Luisa Del Mar needs, needs some hands. And so when you do something like that, uh, be prepared to help manage your inventory, right? If you're out touching 500 or pl uh, plus workstations, uh, with uh, resources that aren't normally part of your IT team, but they're, they're solid, uh, well-credentialed experts, um, have, uh, have a mechanism in place that allows you to say, oh yeah, somebody already touched that machine. Uh, having these uh, in the stock room or making a quick run out to the office supply place uh, is gonna really help you uh, keep track of uh, of what's happening in your environment. Yeah, and I can't, I can't tell you enough. We, we laugh when we look at these little stickers, right? Or, or we have in here blue and yellow, but you, you don't know when, when you're in the heat of battle, which is what it is, it's battle, right? Because we're at war every day. Everybody in this room should understand that. Um, when you're in the heat of battle and you're actually out there, you don't have time to look at a stack of laptops or a stack of thumb drives over here that may or may not be uh, needing to be cleared. So if you can just real quick look, oh, that's the blue stack and this is the yellow stack over here, then you automatically know that these ones need to be done and it keeps it separated. It makes it so easy. It really is critical. So. 
And so as the recovery support team is working, uh, we're engaging with the uh, cyber insurance folks. Uh, an agreement has been passed to uh, senior leadership for attorney review. So we're starting to work towards a handoff from state resources to the uh, contracted and the insurance resources. Want to just do a quick little pivot to what is really going to help your first responders manage an event, and what is something that you know is is not a high cost item for an agency to manage, but you got to think about it. Look at what's on the uh, the left side of the screen versus what you see on the right side of the screen. Right, this is a network room. Uh, I'm sure all of us have seen something like that. We really want to try to work toward what's on the right side there, with a bunch of labels, nice, clean, managed uh, cabling. That's going to help your state responders uh, work a little bit more efficiently. And then of course we can see a server room, uh, left side, right side. Uh, the right side has some, uh, you can see a lot of nice labeling on what these devices are. It's clean. Any preparation you can do now, any investment in time, uh, perhaps you budget two or three days of overtime where you can bring teams in on a weekend and all we're focused on is trying to manage the infrastructure and make sure it's labeled. Not uncommon, right, for us to move some technologies, right? We might get some budget funding one year that says, hey, we're going to buy some new firewalls or we're going to get some uh, new core switches. Uh, but, you know, the IT folks said, well, let's leave the old stuff in place because in case the new stuff doesn't work, we know the old stuff. And then, of course, we never dismantle the old stuff. Uh, it just lives there. And then, and then uh, teams uh, that mark leads show up and, well, which one am I working on, right? Which one, <laughs> you know, which one's flashing, which one's not? So uh, again, not a high cost item, but something that if you can focus on, uh, it'll just make your world of recovery a, a little bit easier. Um, we are uh, transitioning into the cyber insurance folks. So Santa Luisa Del Mar fortunately had cyber insurance. Uh, your cyber insurance folks are going to want to know who their legal points of contact are, uh, understand the forensic debrief from the state IR team who's been working for multiple days now to start handing off to the forensic team that the cyber insurance folks are going to bring to the table. Of course, uh, monitoring software, your, your cyber insurance folks likely are going to bring some sort of monitoring software to help them get a handle on what this situation was and how deep did the, the bad actors get into. Uh, you're going to talk about ransomware details and where the organization is potentially uh, you know, on the, that conversation about uh, are we going to pay a ransom or not pay a ransom. And then, of course, uh, consultant vetting, right? If you're going to bring some experts in, your insurance folks are going to make sure that they're talented experts, that they have the right skill sets available to help solve this problem. And that conversation needs to happen early on. I know we're rolling uh, close to time, so we're going to move ahead a couple of screens here. Um, ransomware demands. CrowdStrike has a very interesting article. Again, you can Google uh, this uh, article from January of this year on what ransom payments look like. What does a ransom uh, potentially what's a range. Uh, CrowdStrike says they're seeing up to 99 Bitcoin being asked. That's $744,000 uh, from the bad actors. So uh, it's not a, cheap, not a cheap little incident that potentially would be there to, to move you through this. The recovery support, um, the full uh, transaction at S Santa Luisa Del Mar has been transferred over to the insurance team now. Uh, the, the state folks are moving into an after action report that they'll provide to the leadership at Santa Luisa Del Mar. Uh, we do have some opportunities to participate in state reporting. Uh, the state's putting some infrastructure, some technology infrastructure in place that would allow your organization uh, to invest in a little bit of technology and report activities up to the state so that they get a better statewide uh, analysis of what's going on. And then, of course, some uh, training resources that are available. Let's see if we've got that there. Some training resources. There we go. Through Cal Poly. Cal Poly CCI. Uh, we heard about SANS earlier this morning about some training that they offer. And it, it's kind of a, uh, an investment. It's a, it's a financial investment to get SANS training. Uh, sure. But there's a, some equivalent training that Cal Poly and, again, our friends at, uh, at uh, CSTI and some of the state agencies are working to offer some training that's a little bit more cost effective. Uh, if you're in the public safety space or law enforcement, it's post uh, blessed. It's post-authorized training, so you might be able to use some of your post funds for that. And also, if you have access to DHS or SHISHCAP grant funding, uh, this is another opportunity for you. CCI Cal Poly uh, .edu. Do a Google on that, and you'll see a number of courses that are SANS quality, available more at a state uh, budget level. 
Your cyber insurance team has now landed. Uh, workstations have been fully contained. Santa Luisa Del Mar is making good progress on network file restoration. Uh, they're starting to make plans on what they're going to do moving forward. And the, uh, the good uh, moral outcome of this story today we're sharing with you is no ransom has been paid. The bad actors have worked hard, but they didn't get anything out of it. Uh, we're bringing our secondary servers up online. Uh, we're going to work on uh, training for the employees of Santa Luisa Del Mar as we move forward. And then the other conversation you want to start thinking about is how can I have a data sharing MOU in place with the Fusion Center? Uh, because part of us all benefiting from events like what happened at Santa Luisa Del Mar is learning from them, right? And what happened there and how can I share that? Uh, a lot of folks that get involved in this after the state leaves, you know, this is quiet. We don't talk about these things. But if you can get a data sharing MOU in place, to share your lessons learned with the Fusion Center, they can put nice bulletins together, give us some indicators of what to watch out for. Maybe we'll learn something that uh, doesn't have to happen again. So our final uh, set of action items for uh, today's uh, Santa Luisa Del Mar scenario is um, incident command. Uh, Mark, I want you to speak just a couple moments about why incident command is important, right? This is a technology event. All of the servers aren't working. Uh, the IT folks are going to fix it, right? And, and just call us when my phone will have email again, and I'll be happy. What, what do we need to really be thinking about here? Yeah, so, so really you have to think about it. It's, a, it's an order perspective, right? We have, to, we have to put it into order. We have to get some kind of order back to a chaos environment. Uh, when you hit an incident, really what happens is people kind of lose control, right? Uh, people are screaming, they start yelling at each other, it gets very stressful. Uh, an incident command center is going to allow you to focus your efforts uh, and to make sure that you stay on track for where you want to go uh, at that day. And, and it's actually critical that you have an incident command center set up for that. So. Because it it's going to be a multi-day disaster. It is literally, it's a technology disaster, but it's going to happen over several days. Some leadership, uh, some priorities, uh, you know, who's bringing in the snacks or, or the pizza on day three, right? Who's in charge of all that? Uh, those are something and an incident commander who's not, you know, on the keyboard can kind of help plan and make some of those big decisions happen for this event to become successful at the end of the day. Sure. Final takeaways, uh, you know, how do you message your employees when your technology systems are down? Do you have consultants that are in the Rolodex, right? And I say Rolodex, right? Can you find that consultant with the phone number and say, hi, we need you here tomorrow if you can. Uh, your backups, something that you might want to have some conversations with your IT leadership about how do we back things up and where do those backups live? And then again, the analog inventory. Uh, there's some folks out there, MSISAC. The other organization I'll share with you is MISAC. That's Local Government IT Organization for the state of California. Uh, state, county, local government, JPAs, MISAC.org. Excellent place to hang out and talk with other peers in the industry. And then as we've already chatted about, patch, 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 reboot. Santa Luisa Del Mar survived, emails up and running. Uh, they have a little extra money in the budget uh, for uh, uh, some cyber work that will continue to go on. And uh, Mark, thanks for being with me today to help tell this story. Thank you for allowing me to sit with you, Greg. <laughs> no Here's our contact information. Thank the, you for your time. This was the easiest panel I've ever been on, sir. <laughs> you did good work. Thank you.